Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Josh. I'm a photographer and filmmaker from West Michigan, and this is part one of a two-part series talking all about how photographers and videographers can better work together on wedding days. Now, a little bit about my story. I have been in the wedding industry for over 10 years now, photographing and filming hundreds of weddings all over the US and internationally. And over the course of that time, I've been able to work as a photographer working alongside of videographers and as a videographer working alongside of photographers. While a photographer and a videographer on a wedding day are oftentimes kind of put together as just like, hey, they're the media, the content team capturing all the photo video for the day. Photo and video are very, very different. And if you don't know how to work alongside of each other effectively, it can definitely lead to some frustration some tension, and just a lower quality of work being produced by both teams. So that's where this series comes in. In part one, which is the video you're watching right now, I want to specifically talk to photographers and how photographers can better work with videographers on a wedding day. There's also a fun freebie that I've created in coordination with the series that I'll talk to you about in a little bit. But for now, let's go ahead and dive in to tip one on how photographers can better work with videographers on wedding days. So tip number one is to establish collaboration early. Now you notice I said collaboration and not communication because communication is just talking and it's easy to just like give information, here's my phone number and leave it at that. But as a photographer, I feel it's kind of our responsibility to make sure that we establish a collaborative workflow, a collaborative work environment at the onset of a wedding day and ideally well before the wedding day. For whatever reason, I feel like photographers are oftentimes viewed as the like higher tier of the media team. Photographers are oftentimes booked before videographers. The photographers are the ones the coordinators oftentimes reach out to first in terms of timeline prep and all that kind of stuff. And then videographers seem to sometimes just be kind of like ushered in at the last moment, ushered in and said, hey, here's what we're gonna be filming. Just kind of make it work. But the reality is photography and videography are equally important in different ways. The work that photographers and videographers capture on a wedding day are going to be the way that the couple remembers their wedding day for decades to come. And whether that's captured through still photographs or moving video, both of those are unique and distinctive perspectives on the day that the couple booked and paid money for to make happen and should be valued equally. And so as the photographer, I always take it on myself to reach out to the videographers early, send them a voice memo on social media, shoot them a quick text or an email and just say, hey, my name's Josh, I'm the photographer for this wedding, but I want this wedding to be a collaborative process. How can I help you enact your vision? Is there anything I can do to make your job and your workflow easier? Like let's work together on all this stuff to make sure we deliver the best thing possible for our clients. Now, like I said, I tend to try to reach out well before the wedding, but at the very latest, the first thing you do when you show up on the wedding day is go seek out the videographer, find where they are, introduce yourself, and just establish that collaborative workflow environment super early on. Again, pre-wedding is ideal, but at the very, very latest, at the beginning of the wedding day, so you start with the assumption of a collaborative work environment. This makes the entire day go so much better. Speaking of collaboration, point number two is to make sure that you shoot the essentials together. I cannot tell you how many times a photographer has run off to go shoot detail photos, hasn't told me they were doing that. They set up the whole flat lay, the dress, the shoes, the florals, all those kind of things. I wasn't aware of that process. Then they tore everything down, brought it back, and I was like, hey, when are we gonna shoot details? I was just never looped in, and then I had to go shoot all of that stuff again. As a photographer, tell a videographer when you're gonna be shooting details, when you're shooting specific getting ready shots, if you're doing any sort of candids, photos and robes, specific touch-ups, makeup, hair, all that kind of stuff. Make sure that you're capturing all of those essential moments at the same time together, number one, so that you don't have to reshoot everything, but number two, so that you can capture all of those moments at the same time as a photo and video team. Again, this is all about collaboration, not about one person going off to go do something while the other person doesn't have any idea that's happening. Obviously, an easy way to do that is just to make sure each of you have each other's phone numbers so you can shoot a quick text and just say like, hey, we're about ready to go into this moment. Can you make sure to show up here? If you have like pocket radios or something, you can do that. That's fantastic as well. But however you decide to kind of set up that communication process, make sure that you're collaborating to shoot those essential details and those essential moments together. Point number three is to be super conscious about framing and composition when you're working alongside of a videographer. Now, this is obviously true whenever you're working alongside of anybody else with a camera, but specifically when you're working with video, make sure that you communicate what focal lengths you're shooting on. If you're trying to shoot wide shots or tight shots, make sure you're communicating about that process throughout the entire day. There have been so many examples where I have been both the culprit and the victim of this, where I've been shooting like a wide shot and someone else has run in front of my camera to capture a tight shot, or I didn't know they were shooting a wide shot and then I ran in front to capture a super tight shot. So as a photographer, make sure you're communicating with the videographer about what focal length you're shooting on and if you're trying to capture wider shots or tighter shots in this specific moment. 
it is far too easy to just focus in on your own camera and your own kind of shooting workflow world. But the reality is you're not in your own world. You're shooting alongside of somebody else. This is a collaborative environment with another creator as well. And you need to be conscious about what each other is working on so that you're able to capture and then ultimately deliver the best product possible to your clients. So throughout the entire wedding day, I will be communicating with the videographer about what focal length I'm shooting on and if I wanna be shooting a wide or a tight shot of this specific scene. And honestly, coordinating this is not that hard. You just say like, hey, let's all shoot wide for a minute, kinda of all step back, get the wide shots. Are you done with all that? Okay, great, let's move in closer and closer and closer so that you're all shooting the same things at the same times. That way nobody's getting in each other's way. The fourth tip for photographers here is don't dominate posing. Like I said earlier, it's super easy for photographers to get kind of placed in this like upper tier category within the media team where the photographer is the one who's calling all the shots, where the photographer is the one who's kind of directing and managing all the people who are in the photos. The photographer is the one who's super conscious of the timeline and the videographer kind of just gets pushed to the outskirts to capture candid moments as they happen. Now, maybe that's how the videographer wants to work. And if so, that's something you can chat about earlier when you're talking about collaborative workflows. But unless the videographer specifically wants to shoot that way, make sure that you're conscious about handing off who is directing certain moments. Now, the way that I typically do this in my workflow is I'll kind of start directing some stuff, work with a couple for a minute or so, capture a few frames, and then be like, all right, Go ahead, videographer, anything you want, kind of step in. You can take my angle if you want that perspective. And I just verbally hand that off so that the couple knows, hey, now they're listening to the videographer. Now the videographer is the one who's directing them. I'm going to kind of intentionally physically move myself to another position so I can capture some different angles, let them talk and direct and work with the client directly. And once they're finished, they hand back off to me and so on and so forth for the entirety of the wedding day. Now, before we move on to the next tip, I just want to take a quick break and talk about the free guidebook that I created as a companion for this video series. I've called it the Collaboration Handbook. It's a completely free download, and it dives into even more detail about how photographers and videographers can best work together on wedding days. I dive into specific details about photo and video workflows, how they're different, how we can work alongside of each other, and I provide two pages of questions that you can ask each other that will help each of you do your jobs better. Like I said, this guide is completely free. I will link it down in the description, so make sure you pick that up, and hopefully that's helpful for you as you work alongside of other photographers and videographers. Moving on to tip number five, and that's as a photographer to make sure that you create time for the videographer to capture movement. This tip really dives into the fundamental differences between photography and videography, something I talk a lot more about in that free handbook, so make sure you download that if you haven't done that. But I think it's pretty obvious that photography and videography are very different things. Well, as photographers, we're experts in seeing those little tiny blink and you'll miss it subtle moments that happen and capturing all of those and using those to deliver a gallery that showcases the story and the emotion and feeling of a day. Video has to capture evolving motion, continuous motion over the course of time. And so as a photographer, even though you might be able to capture something very quickly, providing intentional time for the videographer to finish filming their clips is really, really vital in making sure the videographer actually captures all the footage they need from a wedding day. One of the most practical tips I can give you on this as a photographer is once you've finished capturing the images you need from a specific moment that you're trying to capture, whatever that looks like, don't verbally say that you're finished shooting because then the couple's gonna be like, all right, we're done, you know, whatever we're doing, we can kind of move on to the next thing. Just don't say anything. Give it another 10 or 15 seconds so the videographer can finish capturing the unfolding motion, the unfolding movement throughout the course of that scene to kind of finish the clip they're trying to capture. And then as a photographer, use that time. Use those extra seconds to capture some additional images that you might not have captured otherwise while the videographer is finishing capturing the motion they're trying to capture for their footage. That leads us to the sixth tip, and that's to, as a photographer, to craft space for silence. Again, this goes back to the fundamentals of video, and with video, audio is really, really important. Almost every videographer that I know is capturing some form of live audio on a wedding day, whether that's just through the on-camera microphone or through some professional shotguns or lavalier mics that are actually attached to the couple or to important VIPs on the wedding day. And as a videographer, one of the most annoying things is getting an incredible moment into your editing software and then realize the audio was ruined by the photographer talking in the background or talking to the couple or just constantly having conversations when you were trying to capture intentional, meaningful audio. Now, obviously for photographers, you can't just be quiet the entire day. That's just not practical or possible. However, what I'm trying to say here is to be strategic, be intentional about tapping into your sense of hearing to hear when specific moments are happening, when conversations are happening between the couple or somebody who's in front of the camera and just intentionally reduce the noise that you're making. Just reduce the audio so that the videographers can capture those really, really special audio snippets that they're for sure gonna use in their wedding films. 
And obviously like everything in this video, this is a collaboration. This is a give and take back and forth. You can't stop clicking your camera just because there's some moments happening. You wanna for sure capture those moments on your camera. But what I'm saying here is just pay attention to what's going on. And when a specific moment is happening that might sound really great in a wedding film, be intentional about reducing your overall noise so that the videographer can capture that audio with less interference. All right, two final tips here. The first one is to be strategic about your usage of flash. Now, this is a conversation I always have with videographers at the beginning of the wedding day. Some videographers really don't care about flash being included in their films, and they couldn't care less if you use flash throughout the entirety of a wedding day. But some videographers really care about this. And while obviously you can't just not use flash in moments where you really need to have some additional light, be intentional about how you use that flash and how much you use that flash. This is particularly true on the dance floor when it's not really a high stakes moment, but it's so easy as a photographer just to constantly keep pressing the shutter button, flash flash, 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 flash. And the videographer is just kind of standing there going, hey, you're taking a picture every like two seconds. I only have like a second and a half of flash free clips that I can use before I just get bombarded with your flash. And so if a videographer does care about this, just work back and forth with them. I'll chat with a videographer and just go like, hey, I'm gonna shoot you know five to 10 frames on the dance floor with the flash, and then I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna reposition myself, recompose my shot, recharge the flash. As I'm doing that, you have all the leeway to get in there, get right in the middle of the dance floor, be in the middle of all the stuff that's happening, get your shots that you need. Once you've shot 10 or 15 seconds of that, then it's gonna pop back over to me. I'm gonna shoot five or 10 more shots with the flash, kind of get all in the middle of everything. And then again, step back, move, recompose, recharge the flash, and then you're ready to shoot again. It's a back and forth dance that's really effective in providing the videographer footage that doesn't have flashing strobe lights throughout all of their clips. And point number eight here, and this is kind of a bonus tip, but just don't be selfish about compositions and angles. If you find great light or if you find a great perspective, share that with the videographer. As photographers and videographers, we're not ultimately here trying to bolster our portfolio and get the best shots that nobody else has. We're hopefully here trying to document this wedding day in the most beautiful and effective way possible. And so as a photographer, if you find a great angle, if you find a great perspective, wave the videographer over. Be like, hey, come grab this. This is a really cool perspective. I've done this a lot and people really, really appreciate it when you find a cool angle, when you see some cool light and they're like, oh, I, I wouldn't have seen that because you were standing there, but because you told me to come in and stand literally where you were standing, now I have that shot too. And it's a really great way to just make everything feel more cohesive for the couple and just to foster the sense of collaboration throughout the entire team. So those are my tips on how photographers can work more effectively with videographers on wedding days. If you found value in this video, it would mean the world if you would comment down below, like the video, subscribe if you're interested in the content I'm producing. For sure, check out that free collaboration handbook. It's a free guide that will really, really help you as you approach a wedding day working alongside of another videographer. And if you're a videographer, stay tuned for my part two in the series where I talk about how videographers can work better alongside of photographers at a wedding day. As always, if you have your own perspectives on this, please leave that in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.